Hello there, Chris here from Becker's Models. This video is all about a group build I participated in over the weekend, 48 hours went for. It was for Model for Heroes, a, a charity group in the UK helping returned soldiers and veterans. And it was a really, really fun experience. We all had to build a 148 scale kit uh, and it was live streamed across the, uh, across the world, basically, Europe, UK, Australia, uh, the US. And I chose this thing, Tamiya's Aichi Serian that they launched off uh, submarines, believe it or not. Well, they tried to. And uh, yeah, 48 hours, I actually did 14 and a half hours total of bench time to make this very long video. <laughs> if you just look in the description below and you can click back and forward, have a look at the chapters to see, you know, the process, the cockpit, the chipping, the painting, whatever. So I hope you enjoy this video. There's lots of photos at the end. And uh, yeah, till next time. Right, time to get started. The time is... Read that? 7.15. Oh, come on, phone. Sorry, I've got a dodgy old phone. 7.15, Friday 25th of March. I'll just open this up and we'll get the uh, clock going. Get the stopwatch going. Here we are. Alright, let's get into it. Finished. <laughs> this is a paint mule. That I made a couple of years ago because um, I stole the floats for another another project that it's a well yeah you'll see that down the track one day but it was handy to have this uh, just lying around there were a few other parts missing on the kit I got it really cheap so I'll use this as a as a guide to to what I need to do so I'm just gonna get stuck into it and I'll just show you that all the parts are there instructions all sealed up the fuselage screws clear parts and the wings and then the floats and dolly and the crew a little nose weight you are allowed to use a canopy mask so I've got a canopy mask ready to go and the kit decals decals transfers whatever hopefully I only have to use a few of those and a little bit of bump so let's get started my usual fix for doing these sort of little jobs just some pigments and some uh, super glue mixed together just my little tray here I've already done one here with these little ejection pin marks I'll just quickly fill these in uh, it's probably a little bit too much there hang on all right so these ones I did a minute ago so it should be almost dry I'll just put a little bit more on there yeah, it's not quite dry I wanted to get that done as soon as possible get them out of the way I'll come back to this one in a minute and I'm now going to get into um, construction because yeah, it's supposed to get these done out of the way. So I put the chair in and it's a bit of a not the best fit in the world, it seems to want to slip up or maybe I'll put the slot in the wrong way, I don't know. Anyway, I'm going to put the seat belts in later. I'll show you a trick I'm going to use uh, to make the Tamiya seat belts a bit better. Now I've got to get these rudder pedals in and I don't know why I'm doing it, but I'm going to cut off the little piece of plastic that nobody's going to see. <laughs> oh, why not? I didn't realise that I had to mask up a few plastic things in between. It looks like there's a little bulkhead in between the... Uh, the cockpit half. So what I'm using here is a bit of, whoops, I'm going to put that down properly. I'm using a bit of masking Neo and instead of applying with this massive brush they give you, I just got out one of my cheap and nasty disposable brushes so I can put that on a bit more cleaner. So it looks like I need to do, there's a bit of framing there if you can see that there. So I've just got to paint mask around the framing. So the last thing to, to do is, <coughs> excuse me, is to get the uh, main instrument panel off the sprue. I've assembled the cockpit tub and there was just one piece that went into the, the fuselage there and the instrument panel will go on that side but I need to paint it up and put the decal on it. So again, oops, on my phone, take it off there, put it on the on this thing and I'll go and paint it and I'll go and paint these and as you can see 
bingo, 40 minutes since I started to do to build the cockpit. Right, before I um, go any further, I want to get these wings together and also the floats because uh, I'm contemplating, hmm, might be riveting this thing. <laughs> Let's see how, how I go for time. But if I get these together now, uh, the glue will set up and yeah, then I'll be able to, to manhandle the, uh, the, uh, the wings and, and, the, and the floats actually, because the floats, I think they look a bit naked without any, without any rivets. So I've just checked the test fit and there's, it's, there's a bit of flash on the bottom side of the wing there. Am I getting in camera? Just here at the back, uh, there's a little bit of flash there and that interfered with those two notches. So just be careful with that. But if we go around, it's typical Tamiya fit. Time to make a float. This one I'm gonna put a weight in. I'm gonna give you one weight. So let's get these parts off. Gonna put the prop all together because they're it's the same colour, it's all that whole red sort of colour. So I'll just put the the thing in there. That just rests on whoops. Get back here, you silly potato. <laughs> okay, so that goes there. Let me just check my phone, see how far we are into this build. So, hour and 15 minutes, and I've done the uh, major construction. I've got all the floats, the main wing, a few other parts. I've got to just clean up those flap things. Uh, yeah, I'm not making the bomb. I might make the dolly. We'll see how we go with time, but all the major parts are together and just let that glue go off and then I can do um, seam clean up and so forth. But now I'm going to head to the paint booth and yeah, uh, press the lap there to say that's what I've done, major construction done. I'm going to do some painting. Time to paint the inside fuselage and cockpit. I'm going to start with a light color, even though it's a deep green, the XF26, and then I'll come over the top with a, another green just to do some highlights, but you're not really going to see much. Uh, so yeah, let's just get into it. I've already done a little try run here, so I'll get the old trusty airbrush out. Now, um, I'm just spraying this straight onto the bare plastic. It's just a uh, Tamiya paint thinned with, uh, with uh, what's it called? Mr. Mr. Levenly Thinner. If you just do light coats, Slowly build it up. Just to add a bit more volume and a bit, bit of darkness to it, I've added some Japanese Army Green XF13 to that, and you can see it just gives it a little bit more volume and darkness compared to, say, the what I've done here in the fuselage, it's that's very, very green. So I'll just go over these uh, fuselage sides with just a little bit of uh, this mix. I'm not too sure about this mix. It's uh, it took me a while to get that bottle open. I think at the um, yeah, I don't think it's a it's a very old bottle of Tamiya. So you can see that's quite a bit darker. 
I'm just going to add some splotches in between the ribs there. Just to get a bit of volume, just over spray the whole thing lightly. Shut up compressor. <laughs> Alright, I've primed, kind of, <laughs> with some uh, leftover Tamiya Green for the instrument panels, even though it's supposed to be black, but it's a good base to put the MRP down, because sometimes I find this is too thin uh, to go straight on plastic, so just need to give this a bit of a black coat and it'll be nice and glossy smooth. I can just put decal straight on top. I'm just blowing air on that to dry it, because lacquer dries pretty much instantaneously. I'll give it another light coat. Shiny. Alright, let's do the other one. So like I was saying, I don't know if this whole board's supposed to be black or just those dials, but uh, it doesn't matter. Just do it all black. Nice and glossy, and while I'm at it, I've got the gun sight all masked up, and that back panel's the right colour, so I just need to get the gun sight. I think it's all black. I might add some brown to it after this. I'm using a bit of this life color field gray, which is more of a, a sort of a saturated, or not desat desaturated green. And uh, just using a nice little dry brush here, one of these Vallejo ones. Okay, it's starting to go, but it's still pretty good. And yeah, you can see that just by lightly dragging over those uh, panel lines, panel lines, and what are they, ribbing and so forth, I'm just sort of uh, giving it, it's a bit more darker than what it looks like on screen, which is fine. I might even give it another tiny little highlight some of those pieces with some with a light green but I'm happy with how that goes I'll just show you how this works so I get the get a bit of a get the brush a little bit wet just pull it a little bit on the end of the brush like that and then of course the secret with dry brushing is to remove almost all of it yeah, there's barely any left over there on that side. So let's get the other fuselage half. And I'm very lightly just dragging the brush over those raised bits. And then over the ribs. So it's not, not a lot for a pretty good effective technique there. See, it's come out straight away. So after detailing up a few little pieces here and there, I'm now going over with some very light green life color and just adding some extra highlights on some of those ribs and some pieces just to make it all bring out again. So I'll get onto this side next. And on the cockpit itself, the tub, um, you can see where the dry brushing's really helped to bring out the bottom. Uh, I've painted the cannon black, but, or cannon, <laughs> it's a machine gun, and then I'll dry brush aluminium over the top of that, but I'll wait till the end that, to do that because I'm going to sponge chip some stuff in there, and yeah, again, I'll use a little bit of the highlights of the, the light green to make this pop a little bit more, so let's keep going. I find it very hard to film this uh, under camera, so I'm just going to do it off camera, so hang on a second. So I've got a bit of Vallejo steel here, I'm just going to try to bring out this barrel a little bit, Oop, too much, most of that barrel won't be seen, but there we go. Wait, hold the phone. I forgot to do one last thing, and that's some sponging. So I'm just using some uh, Vallejo semi matte just to do some sponge chipping. Let's see if I can get here on the um, on the seats, particularly. And also, I can put the seat belts on. I keep forgetting. So I'm just 
hitting the edges of that seat there. I'll see if I can get some on the side panels. There we go. Definitely some on the wheels. I'll put some extra chips on the, on the rear gun there. Let's see if I can get into that seat. Definitely on the handles. See that effect there? It's a very, very minor effect, but after layering in all the other stuff, it should should help. Some of these switches and dials here. Yep, that's making it pop. All right, I'm ready to finish the cockpit, but the method I'm going to use here for the seat belts is instead of using them as a decal, because they've come out really, really thin. You don't get that scale thickness. I mean, you know, even. Um, there's not much carry film on these Tamiya decals, which is a surprise. Yes, I'm actually going to trim and cut them out and glue them on with the backing paper on. So let me just try that. So I've carefully cut out the seat belts and given them a go just to give them a little small bend here inside that front seat. And they, they really do look, I mean, they're the right thickness, but they still look a bit cartoonish. I can't get them to conform. So I'm going to try to, um, I might ditch that and just use a straight decal uh, solution there. It's not the best, it'll be really, really thin, but it's better than nothing. And then I can hit it with a flat coat and uh, try to make it blend in with the rest of the, uh, the cockpit. Well, it's taken me, there we go, four and a half hours, including a nice break in the middle to have a cup of coffee and a couple of pickies uh, to, yeah, get this to the stage to button the whole cockpit up so let's get to it so the um, seat belts are on flat coat added just out of a rattle can just away we go instrument panels in the is in there with the gun side in and this should I'll just try to do this on camera just slot in there like that there we go I have done a dry fit so I do know it fits so let's give it a bit of glue get this done so that tomorrow I can work on the next stage. Okay, a bit of quick glue to get going because it's getting late. <laughs> I want to go to bed. But uh, yeah, this this kit was, uh, well the cockpit was a bit fun, but you know, if I had a problem with the instrument panel, that was all my fault. I didn't, wasn't paying attention, I was going too fast and uh, yeah try to do better next time but I probably would go for a aftermarket cockpit next time and the Tamiya one's not too bad at all but you know to up the detail I have got a few reference photos from the uh, from the one that still exists in the museum and yeah the detail in that cockpit is quite extraordinary it's a uh, there's a quite quite a bit going on so it looks like I've got a good fit let's make sure I've got no glue in my hands Yep, there we go, satisfying click that you get from an F Airfix. No, you don't get that from an Airfix. Bloody hell, Jesus. Don't get me started. Okay, I'm just going to get out a clamp to clamp the tail shut. Here's one I prepared earlier, right over here. Does that cl clamp shut? Yeah, it does. And I did notice on my paint mule that there is a little gap there if, you don't, if you're not careful. But this looks pretty good, and most of the cockpit, of course disappears <laughs> as is always the case but you know good enough all right I'm gonna put the glue on off camera but um, I'm gonna call that quits for now four hours 32 minutes to get to this stage it's not quite shake and, shake and bake is it um, some people say that's all you need just a couple of hours but no it takes a bit longer than that so anyway let's get on with it and hopefully next time you see this it'll have something else on it so I've spent about an hour cleaning up the uh, the seams and so forth on the on the kit. The only area I actually needed any filler was just in front of the gun sight there. Just a spot of super glue everywhere else was fine. Same with the floats and the wings. And I've come to this point in the build where I've decided, well, let's just add a little bit of extra time and do some riveting. Before I go on, I've paused the timer and I did last night include an hour or so for a little break that I had. When it took about an hour to clean up all the the seams and and so forth so net we're fine so it's taken four hours 38 minutes to get to this point and I'm going to start the watch again 
and show you how long it takes to rivet the, uh, the aircraft. I'll give a quick explanation first and I'll get straight into it. I'll try to get the angles right, but sometimes it's hard because I always wear my, my magnifier when I do this. And when I do this, you always see my hair in the camera. So basically, I just found a couple of uh, online diagrams, some plans from a Japanese book, and another overall one. And I'm going to estimate the uh, the the pacing, the widths, I guess you could call for the for the Aichi, for the Syrian. And I've already done a few runs on my my paint mule here, just trying to work out the size. I'll be using the Rosie the Riveter 0.75. It's slightly bigger than what I need, the 6.5, but I can see it a bit better and uh, it'll, it'll show up because you know what's the point of doing this. It's the only issue with um, Tamiya kits from the 90s and so forth. Great surface detail but most of the time they miss a lot of uh, rivets. So adding the rivets we're really up to detail. So let's get into it. The first thing I do is I steal my eight year old son's pencil and give it a, a sharpen. So thanks very much Mark for that. And uh, I've got a steel rule, work out my measurements, my pacing by scale and um, I'll start getting into it. So the riveting took just over two hours and seven minutes. I've just paused it there, come back downstairs for a cup of coffee, and it's done. It took, <laughs> yeah, that was fun. All right, so I've got, that's actually not glued together. It just snap fits together in there nice and, let's push it down again, there you go. So that's nice and, and flush. I need to add on the radiator and a few other parts in here, but pretty much the aircraft is ready to go. And of course the flaps, uh, the floats are riveted. Okay, this one's got the, the weight. So it was a pretty straightforward process. I've got a couple of wavy lines here and there. I had one errant run that I was able to clean up. Uh, but what I have to do next before I do anything else is just clean up with a thousand or maybe some 800 grit. Just it's a bit raised on the surface there. Clean that up, glue it together and get stuck into painting. So it took a bit of time to mask the canopy and get it to fit just right. Uh, I had to adjust the fit a little bit here and there and I also had to get those uh, those two little scoops in there just at the front. Um, I had to modify the the, the slots that are in there, they were far too um, narrow to actually fit in there so that took a little bit of giving and then uh, I forgot to rivet the flaps so I've added the rivets to the flaps and installed them and I just needed a little bit of Mr. Surfacer in the literally just a tiny amount just in there and I knew this from my um, paint mule just at the back there where the tails meet uh, just needed a tiny little touch but anyway I am ready now for a paint so I'm gonna paint the float separately I'm not gonna attach them until the end and uh, yeah it's now coming up to eight hours and nearly 15 minutes I'm just gonna have a quick lunch break and then get stuck into the favorite bit which is the painting before I prime the whole airframe, I need to do the inner color of the canopies and the windshield there. So I'm just going to paint it the deep green that I used for the inside. Time for primer down. I'm going to use Stonal Res uh, Metal for a nice shiny metallic underneath because I'm going to chip this one away. So let's get going. I've painted the Hinamuras, the meatballs, whatever you want to call them, the red markings both on the fuselage sides, on the wings and underneath, and I've masked them up so um, they should be protected from this next layer. Uh, heavy chipping fluid, basically hairspray, so I'm going to, I've already done the floats and the prop, so they're all done ready to be painted. I'm just going to uh, put a couple of coats on this one, and while that's drying, I'll get stuck into those floats. We're getting there. Time to paint the prop. I've painted the tips uh, yellow, and it's only on one side, that's, I'm just replicating the decal and just put some one mil strip 
there and then just a whole red but thinned with X20A because this will be chipped. So here we go. Time to put the main colours down. I'm going to start with the floats and do XF12 for the light colour and uh, again thin this with X20A for Tamiya for chipping effects. base paint down I've also added some highlights here and there it's just bleached out a little bit I don't know if you can see that in the camera I'm just going for some real basic effects there um, yeah hopefully the panel line washes will make it a bit more uh, viewable after that but I've also added the uh, red no walkway stripes to the to the floats I just need to mask them and then I can put the final green color on and we're painted time for the main green XF11 so let's get moving Last thing I wanted to do is just to increase the, I don't know what you call it, the, <laughs> I'm quite tired now, I've done a lot of painting about four hours in a row or something. Anyway, I'm adding some deep green right to the end just to make that green palette a bit more richer. As you can see it's it's giving it a lot more, uh, yeah, a lot more things to say than just uh, those dull dark greens. So I'm, I'm just going to add a little bit more and you can see what I'm doing. And I'm just hitting some panels. Just making things a little bit brighter. A lot of this is going to get lost when I chip it. And I'm also killing some of the overspray I had with um, when I added that chromate stuff. It really um, it splattered quite a lot, a lot more than I thought it would. So this will help just dial it back. For some reason, the deep green is working really well. Some of the other greens don't work too well with the X20. And I think that will do. We'll call that a day. I'll just quickly spin her around. So the underside's done. I've just got this worm on here to, to fix this. I had some overspray on that demarcation line. Still not quite right. I'll to give that another hit, I think. But yeah, I'm done painting. Time to do some chipping. My favourite tools are a bristle brush, angle brush like that, a Tamiya paint stirring stick, good for doing long big scratches, and a, well not a broken, but a, an airbrush needle with a bit of a, a dodgy tip, I'm sure we've all got one of these, and a little bit of water. So let's get started. I'm going to leave the masks on for the Hanamuras, they should be fine anyway, it's MRP, but um, the basic method here is to activate the underlying hairspray or chipping fluid. I just put the water on. So I start I just do one section at a time. Definitely need to do those flaps. And then I just start to agitate the, the paint, give it a bit of a scrub and uh, yep I'm already starting to get some there it goes. It's starting to come off already. So this is, looks like a um a bit more delicate than usual because you know Tamiya thin with X20A is 
very easy to activate. That MRP on the yellow should be a little harder, so it should be a bit sturdier. But I just want to do a little bit of chips here on the bottom wing. I'm really going to go to town on the top wing, so... Now we get into the, the where the chipping is going to be the most dramatic, and that's on the floats. Uh, seaplane floats always get better to help, so hopefully the, uh, the amount of extra work I've put in those the paint there will, will brush off, pardon the pun, but I'm, my reference photos show some really big longitudinal s scratches down the, these floats, so this should chip up really nicely, especially on, there we go, <laughs> especially on the green, look at that. Oh, even the red's coming away, well that's good, that was MRP I think, so the MRP went really well, look there you go, getting a little bit on the on the light grey, which is good because I've got a bit of overspray there I need to clean off. But I think I'm going to employ the Tamiya Paint Scratcher. So just do long strokes like this. There we go. Beautiful. And the extra rivet detail, I'm actually pulling on the rivets there and the rivets are coming up as chips. So that's great. I'm getting exactly what I want there. So obviously the most to the front, where the bare metal comes straight off as it hits the uh, water really fast. And then just a little bit to the rear, so I'll keep working that. Now we're on to chipping the upper wing. So there's the port side one has been done, and I've just finished the starboard side. Okay, just want some subtle chips where they're supposed to be. And I'll show you how I did it. Do it in sections is the easiest way to do it. I'll just zoom in. So your chips can't be random. They have to be in a correct spot. So I'm just lightly dragging the water over the surface there. And I'm just going to stop there at the flaps. And I'll do the outer wing separately. What I really want to focus on is in this area here because that's obviously where the crew get in and also there's this, a reinforcing strap here you can see on the other wing I've really chipped that one all the way back so I'm going to use a variety of methods I'll use the brush first and that's going to take off a lot of the edge there so that's, that's already coming off and I'm just using the edge of the brush in all different directions to lift off you can see there on the fuel filler caps that's starting to chip away these rivets are starting to come up, so I'm glad I riveted this because it's really helped increase. Oops, so we go. I've got some activation over there, so I've got to be a bit more careful now not to be. See those big chips there? I've got to be a bit more strategic now. They're going to come off nice and quick. See that? So I want to hit these excess panels a bit, just the edge of the panels. Some big chips there. Fuel filler caps, and let's go to town on that strap. What I really want, so I'm going to use a stabbing motion here, and that's going to get me microchips. Can you see that? So that replicates, you know, a hundred boots over a few days, just walking onto this surface and scratching it all different ways to hell. Oh heck! Okay, so that'll do for that. I'm going to use my Tamiya stirring stick, which will just put a little bit of water on it, and I'm just going to do some little micro scratches just to enhance the big ones. And this is really good for dragging over those lines of rivets to get them to come up a bit. And I'm just going to enhance the side of the, the hatches there with some more scratches and some more little ones here. So I'm tapping the surface multiple times because you're just replicating those those boots just constantly abrading this. Sometimes it goes back to whole square, it's just completely gone. And this is not unique to Japanese aircraft, British aircraft, American aircraft, Russian aircraft, they're all pretty poorly chip away because it's not a parade. The only thing that really don't chip on Japanese aircraft, although there are exceptions to the rule, are the um, 
Hinamoras. That's why I paint them and seal them first so I don't put hairspray on them. So I'm just going to drag along here and I'm getting these coming up nicely. And I'm looking to the other wing to make sure I'm not being symmetrical with my chips. I want to make sure that there's something different going on. Now this has only taken half an hour so far, I think, to, to chip this and including the, the floats. Floats are done. Uh, I'm not being that careful, if I'm honest, <laughs> this time around compared to when I did my Corsairs. But um, yeah, so I think I want to hit those those flaps though. Those, oops, I want to hit the flaps. So it's going to give them another scrub. There we go, so those reinforcement plates that have gone on top would obviously get chipped away. So there we go, it's coming off. No, that's really not, I'm getting almost, I'm taking away almost all the paint there, which is exactly what I want. Just a little bit on that side. But here, because that's where the crew would stand on it, wouldn't it? Probably told them not to, but they would do it anyway. Because that's the easiest way to get in. So scrub, 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 scrub. And I'm getting into that wing root as well. So that's coming out really nicely. All right, I'll go finish it now. Well, just past the 12 and a half hour mark and I'll finish the chipping. I'm just taking the masks off next and then we can get into the final weathering. So these masks were a combination of some RAF and some Japanese ones and that one's a little bit out of register so I'm gonna have to fix that that white I must have put it down wrong that's an easy fix there's no problem so the flight plans all assembled I've got the floats on I've got the exhausts in uh, it's time to just give a basic panel line wash and I have also given a, a flat coat don't you see some Tamiya rattle can just get it going so it's got a nice flat coat on there. I'm going to add some panel line washes. I'll use the dark brown on the green and the dark gray on the gray. And uh, yeah, after that, the, the weathering should be complete and I can put the final bits on and call this a night, a weekend. Well, it's nearly over. I've got the panel line wash on there and I'm just going to let it dry and then I'll put another flat coat on to seal it and I'll just need to paint the wingtip lights and the pitot tube and the antenna put the prop on um, demask the canopy and windshield and it's finito so here we come to the favorite part of any aircraft build unmasking the canopy I've got the prop here I've got the pitot tube ready to go on 14 and a half hours let's get this thing done